yesterday. But this is going to be a serious issue, and it's going to be an ongoing issue. Uh, Labor Day has come and gone. After Labor Day, traffic on the roads increases uh, dramatically. It's always been the way. Uh, traffic gets lighter in the summer. Traffic gets heavier in the New York City area after uh, Labor Day. And markedly so. I've experienced it all my life. Uh, it's a good sign that people are coming back to work in New York City. That's a positive. We encourage that. When you look around the world at cities that have reopened, almost all across the board, the first wave of reopening is people drive into the metropolitan area because they feel safer in their vehicles than they do on public transportation. Uh, and that's understandable. My whole message for months has been social distancing, be careful, protect yourself. Uh, so if you leave your house and you get in your car and you drive to work, that is apparently the safest course. Uh, I understand that. Uh, it is also uh, a situation that is fraught with peril on a different front. Uh, New York City cannot deal with the vehicular traffic of everyone commuting by car and not taking public transportation. Now, uh, Pat and Sarah are on the phone. The MTA has done an extraordinary job throughout this whole COVID pandemic. It really has been a masterful uh, administrative and managerial act. Uh, the decision to uh, curtail train service uh, in the late night hours so that they could disinfect the entire system. I mean, just think that is an unimaginable chore. And they did it. And they did it. Uh, the trains have never been cleaner. Uh, homeless people have been better served after years of going around and around and around. Uh, homeless people are, uh, nobody wants people sleeping on the trains. They're now uh, going into the shelter system, getting services they need. So they've done a masterful job. Mask compliance uh, on the MTA system is very, very high. It's roughly 90 percent uh, but we want to make sure that people feel comfortable coming back to public transportation we want people on metro north we want them on the long Railroad. we want them on the subway system they know the cars are clean they know they're disinfected the last variable is are the other riders on the trains uh recognizing social distancing and are they wearing masks that's what people want to know. If I get on the Long Island Railroad, Metro North subway car, will other people be wearing masks? Yes, 90%. Well, uh, I'm nervous about COVID. I want to make sure that compliance is very high. And they're right. Uh, I said to the MTA, you have to come up with an enforcement plan for people who are not wearing masks. We have to be able to say to the riding public, yes, everyone will be right wearing masks. <laughs> if they don't have a mask, uh, MTA will give them a mask to wear. If they refuse to wear a mask, they will uh, be evicted from the system. Uh, if they're not wearing a mask, we will enforce the mask wearing uh, rule. Uh, we have to be able to say that to give riders comfort to re-engage the system. And uh, Labor Day uh, is come and gone. Uh, the volume is up. And I've asked the MTA to come up with an enforcement regimen so people know that 
not only are the cars clean and the stations clean, but the riders will be acting appropriately. And with that, let me turn it over to Pat and Sarah to uh, explain what the MTA is going to do in terms of compliance. Pat? Uh, thank you, Governor. Uh, as a result of the governor's prior executive order, wearing a mask wearing a mask on public transit is mandatory. The governor's executive order has the force of state law. Compliance on subways, buses, Metro North, and Long Island Railroad mask compliance remains high. Uh, 96% on buses, 90% uh, on subways, well over 90% on both Metro North and Long Island Railroad. But we want to drive it even higher. Achieving universal mask compliance is our goal. All health experts agree that wearing a mask is the best thing that all of us can do to limit the spread of COVID-19. And as the governor has said in the past, it's a matter of respect for one's fellow co-commuters and MTA uh, employees. Uh, I'll note that we have distributed over 4 million masks to customers on Metro North subway, and Long Island Railroad subways and buses. Those masks have been provided uh, by New York State and New York City. Uh, at the governor's direction on Monday, the MTA will file a rule on an emergency basis with the New York Secretary of State. That will, rule will provide for a $50 fine for, not, for failure to comply with the mass directive on subways, buses, Long Island Railroad, and Metro North. Uh, that emergency rule will be effective immediately upon filing on Monday and will provide for the $50 fine I just, remember, I just mentioned. There will be a 60-day public comment period after which the MTA board will consider the public comments and adopt a final rule. But again, the rule will be effective immediately upon filing with the Secretary of State on, uh, on Monday. <clears throat> Lastly, the governor noted that extraordinary work has been done disinfecting subway stations, Long Island Railroad, Metro North, uh, buses and accessoride vehicles. And I do want to thank our workforces at New York City Transit, MTA bus, Long Island Railroad, and, uh, and, and Metro North. Uh, thanks, Pat. Uh, it's Sarah Feinberg. Thanks. Good to be with you, uh, Governor, as well. So as, as Pat said, again, um, we're seeing com very high um, compliance of mass usage on the subway system and in buses. And we'll go over the numbers again. Um, but I think we're seeing that high compliance rate for a couple of reasons. One, because of the executive order masks are required. But two, people, the vast majority of people tend to do the right thing. And finally, three, because we have masks in booths and on buses and in the system for those who need them. So the vast, vast majority of folks have their own mask and are wearing them. But if you lose your mask, if it falls out of your pocket, if it breaks, we have a mask for you at the booth in every station. We have them on buses. Uh, NYPD officers have them. MTA police officers have them. Conductors have them. Uh, so for all kinds of reasons, compliance is very high. But to the governor's point, you know, transit is key in people coming back to the city and coming back to work. And so if, even if it's just one or two people in the system, you know, they do not have the right to uh, endanger anyone else. And frankly, they don't have the right to scare anyone uh, away from the system. So this is so today by starting to draft this regulation that will it will really allow us to use another tool in our toolbox to ensure mass compliance. Um, you know, we already have fines on the books uh, for violations of our rules and regulations for you know, smoking, for fare ver evasion, for items like that. So this is uh, very similar to that. It's just another tool in our toolbox to ensure compliance. Um, so again, this is a last resort. This is really for the, the very few people who refuse to wear a mask when uh, when offered, um, and I, it will be enforced by the MTA police, and of course will be dependent on the NYPD for enforcement as well. We will not be asking our own workforce to enforce uh, this regulation. They've uh, already got plenty to do, and that's not their job. Uh, but believe that this will be really helpful in getting us uh, closer to the goal of 100% mask compliance.